Hello and welcome back. Sean here, Mountains Garage. On a gray Saturday afternoon, it's supposed to snow later on. It's been a fantastic couple days. The sun has been out near 50 every day and lots of melting. But I've spent most of it right here making a colossal mess, trying to make some headway, and I have on my large frame bead roller that takes the small 22 millimeter dies. As a matter of fact, speaking of the dies, looking forward to potentially selling the Woodward Fab, but not wanting to give up all my dies, I bought the traditional set of six dies that come with it for $82. That's six sets of dies for $82 shipped. That was on Amazon. Three quarter dies, you know, your professional big bead rollers, that would get you one if you're lucky, one set. So I won't hop on that anymore, but that's why I thought this was a worthwhile project. And it presented itself, and you know, my buddy was willing to cut out the basic shape, and the race was on last week. A week ago today, I had just arrived back home with all the raw materials and all the excitement that goes with a new project. <laughs> If you only knew what lied ahead. So, But here we are, and I shot a few clips, not many. Uh, my last video, I had just realized my rear bearings, excuse me, my rear gears were too tight together, and I needed to split that, so I'll insert some footage right here. Where I did that, and where I laid out the internals and tacked on the outer skin. So I'll show you that, and I'll be right back to pick up where I left off. I split the bearing block and found a couple shims, the silver container and the kit of notcha is where all the extra scrap pieces fall when I notch pieces of metal. I found a couple that make the gears rotate nicely. So I'm going to trim it off and weld it up. I'm going to weld the shim right in the middle of it. You'll never know it's there thousands of years from now when they split this piece of metal. They're going to find it. I had V'd it out pretty good. I had to do two passes. Despite that, I still got some pretty good colors. The block's pretty thick to absorb the heat. So. And thinking about it, I'm just going to grind the top and bottom and leave the weld. Why not? As you saw, I cut the block apart, welded it back together. Overnight, while I was thinking about it, that's what I love about projects. You know, your brain's always working to try to do things better when you have no plan and you're just kind of winging it. Making a project your own, you come up with your own ideas. And the ones I've seen, they weld the blocks in. I thought to myself, why? I had to machine it anyway because I spread it out and it wouldn't fit between these pieces anymore. So I already had it in the mill. I'm like, why don't I just drill two holes in the block? Actually, I clamp the two halves of the roller together so they're perfectly aligned and drill the bolts bolt holes in it first and then I mock the block and now it's very precision and uh, while the shafts are out I ground all my flat spots on the mill as well for the set screws and uh, we're ready to test and it works the gears I can take off independently they mesh perfectly and there's no lube or anything on the gears or the bushings or anything, but it works quite nice. This is a handle I had left over from one of the bead rollers I got. And yeah, we're on our way. So now I'm going to extend the square tubing and extend the piece of flat by that's going to go the length inside. Tack that all, actually weld that all up. And then the final step will be put the skin on the outside and hook the front bearing blocks up. But the rear is done. I just want to sit here and, where's my monkey? I actually don't like monkeys.
So Thursday night, I attacked on the top skin, if you want to call it, the rib in the middle, the finished layer on the outside. And this was the funnest part of the whole project. Unfortunately, and the way it always goes, I had nudged the welder, I had nudged the wire speed setting, and these spot welds are not as pretty as the bottom. Once again, the bottom where you can't see it is really nice. These are fine, but not, you know, I'm going to look at that for the rest of my days and wish I could have done better. But hey, when I put enough glove enough paint on it, it'll be fine. It's actually not bad. I'm just really picky, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> so yesterday, after running a few errands, I flipped it over, welded this piece on the bottom, and essentially finished all the welding. And you have to go over, I go over with my, my still, same wore out flap disc I've been doing everything with because it doesn't really gouge in, but it'll take all the little spatter pieces, if you will, the slag, I can see I gotta get a little on the handle here where I had to weld this the second time because after I clean the entire body, especially in here, I still could do a little more sanding in here to make that perfectly smooth. The box tubing worked out really well. Gives me a nice shelf here. Again, you can't see the shaft up here, but it's free to go up and down. So with this upside down of the bench, I attempted to install the upper shaft. Again, it's upside down. And I realized that I failed the day before, the night before, in my haste to put the sides together and everything. Let's do some simple math. This is two inches ID in the middle. This is a two inch piece of flat bar. It fits right in between the halves. The shaft is one inch. For a guide for the front bearing block, it's behind it, so it allows it to go up and down when you crank the handle without flopping around. I cut a piece of half inch bar stock square and welded a half on either side. So when you go to attempt to put a one inch shaft between two pieces of, well, long story short, there's no room for it. Unfortunately, installing the front block, well, let's revisit the blocks. I made the rear bolt in. I made the front one bolt in. There's two bolts that go up from underneath. I extended the underneath of this square tubing. It was a perfect shelf for the lower front block, two 5 16 bolts in the bottom of it. It actually allows me to shim it to make it run as smooth as possible. That worked out really well. This upper piece I made right here, knowing that my adjuster needed more room to come up, I wanted to make sure I didn't hamstring myself by welding the nut onto this piece. I wanted a little bit more lift just in case, trying to think ahead and I thought, I bent this up on my little uh, hydraulic bender I was gonna drill and tap this with like four quarter inch bolts so I could remove this at any point. You could take the uh, die off, you could take the little uh, half inch, excuse me, one inch shaft collar, you could unbolt this, slide it ahead, rotate it and pull it right off. So all the blocks, the one rear and the two front would be serviceable down the road. The rear is, the bottom is, the top I got rolling along and I welded it. <laughs> no big deal if the shaft had fit, but now I needed to get the shaft back out, get the block out, which is not removable in this configuration. So I had already welded the handle on and everything with a weld right here, so I, but it was longer. I have plenty of space. So I cut it off, was able to with the lower shaft and block out of the way, lower the front block, do my grinding and reassemble it. Long story short, I got it back together. The lower shaft went in without very much drama. Again, I learned I had to shim it a little bit just to make it run as smooth as possible. If I had to do it over again, <laughs> one, obviously I've learned I need 1018 cold rolled shaft material that worked good that was in a, relatively inexpensive while well, I got my buddy gave it to me but looking up the prices online I could get two shipped to my house for a hundred and hundred dollars pretty much they make some really precision shafting the sky's the limit you could spend five hundred dollars on shafts doesn't seem necessary 
To do it again, I would probably research some type of drive-in roller bearing. Instead of the oil light bushings, I think it would make the whole rig smoother. You know, some type of flange bearing, one inch shaft that probably wouldn't be that difficult to find. If I had to make the body bigger, I could, but uh, the oil light bushings are fine. It's, it runs just fine right now. It's tight, it's like a brand new, uh, you know, it's brand new. When you polish the shafts and you put the bushings over it, it's got some drag, drag times four. Again, it's gonna break right in and it rolls just fine with my uh, Woodward Fab drive motor. And, wow, how's that thing go? It's fine, it's fine, everything's fine. <laughs> the drive, this morning, I came out and I laid the bead roller on its side which allowed me to shim under the motor. The motor is square, fortunately. And the Lovejoy style coupler that comes with the Woodward Fab motor. Again, this motor is rated for half horse. I assume the coupler is aluminum, which kind of scares me. Most of you Lovejoy, which is a brand, but they make the same style coupler with the rubber disc in the middle, drive disc. Uh, there's a cast, but this one's aluminum and uh, I can always change it out if it happened to break or anything down the road, it's simple enough. Two bolts. But anyway, so I was able to, I put it on the shaft. I put a hose clamp around the Lovejoy just to make sure it was perfectly straight. And I found a piece of bar stock, drilled and tapped it half inch, slid it underneath because the motor bracket came up over the body of the bead roller, lined it all up, welded it, removed it, welded it, put it all back together. Works flawless. So that was easy. And the Woodward Fab drive unit comes with a shield hang on it had a sticker on it i just took it off and stuck it on the motor itself and if i cut it about right where that screw is all the way across here it's actually going to bolt back on with four bolts so still so uh that's easy that saves you some fab work this is actually a pretty stout piece so i after i paint it i will grease up the gears and modify this bolt it on there and i'll be osher approved i'll give you a quick tour is my reapplied sticker. That's the coupler I was talking about. I just put a hose clamp right around the middle while I was lining everything up. I've already Loctited all my set screws on the flat that I machined. I forgot to mention, I machined all the shafts with a flat area for the, the uh, grub screw, a set screw to hit. This is the bolts of the bearing block. This is my Piece of flat bar that I drilled and tapped. Allows that to bolt right on. On the business end, I bolted the block here up underneath like that. You see the shim I used to, it seemed to run freer with a little bit of shim. I was having to pull the shaft down to tighten the bolts. So I didn't have a bottom and tap. So I was trying not to drill into the bushing, made the hole as deep as possible. And uh, I've ordered the bottom and tap, but it threads in there just fine. These holes here were not needed. My buddy spot welded his block in there, but not required. If you look in the back in there, those are the half inch blocks that were, I had to disassemble everything and grind a little bit so the shaft would clear and go up and down. But it was a success. It measures 40 inch of throat total when you have the stick out and uh, I like the box tube and makes a nice flat area in here still left to do to this piece is uh, attach the Eastwood fab table but next I'm going to build the stand and get this material <laughs> and this out of the way and then I'll work on a few trinkets I have some just three eighths rod. I don't know if I'm gonna make little stands for all my dies on top of the bead roller or on the upright of the stand. That's my my test hook, my test hole that I drilled is now my lift hook. And you can see the balance point is actually slightly forward of where my buddy made the holes for the stand. So I'm sure the stand's gonna be 40 inches long that I'll have to have a front support as well. But we'll see. Time will tell. A quick check of the weight. 
I'm 140 pounds so far. And it's over five feet long and I haven't added the table portion yet. The table's actually gonna tilt down or be removable with pins, but it's already at ridiculous size. <laughs> My original goal was to maybe have a smaller one that took up less space, and here we are. <laughs> you gotta laugh. All right, I'm gonna move this out of the way and start working on the stand after I eat lunch. So, catch you in a couple days. Hope you're having a great weekend.